Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. Let's design an ultralight. Now that we've talked about the design goals for the new ultralight airplane, which we are now calling the UWS Model 1, it's time to get into the aircraft configuration, start getting into the design of the airplane. And if you'd like to look at the video of the goals, I've got a card up here in the upper right hand corner of the screen that you can click on to go see the goals video. So the first step in our more detailed design of the airplane after we came up with the goals is the aircraft configuration. And that's going to be the relationship of the airplane main wing, the control surfaces, and the pilot to each other. Now for this ultralight, as we described in the goals, the, the main objective is to have a great view. Mostly looking down, looking forward and down, looking to the side and down. So that goal, the view, is going to be the driving consideration in coming up with the aircraft configuration. Now there are some other considerations from that goals document that are also going to have impact on our configuration. One of them is the redundant parts of the goals, in this case, redundant motor, but also some of the other redundant features. We want redundant control services. We wanted tricycle gear. That's going to have an effect on the configuration. We want an enclosed cockpit. That will have some effect on the configuration. As a quick review for that unobstructed view goal, Highest priority is down and forward. Uh, next priority is down to port and down to starboard, so down to left and down to the right. And then a little bit less important, but still desirable for this recreational flying we wa are wanting to do, is down aft to left and down aft to the right. There are a number of configurations we need to give some consideration to for our aircraft, and we can use a lot of existing configurations to do that. One of the more conventional is the tractor configuration with high wing or tractor with low wing. Now tractor means engine in front of the airplane, pulling the airplane along. There's also a conventional pusher. You will see that on quite a few ultralights. That means the engine is pushing the airplane instead of pulling the airplane. Now conventional high wing and you can have some conventional low wing. In fact, there are motor gliders in that configuration. Another consideration is the canard configuration where you have the elevator in front of the main wing. Now in this case it's doing lift whereas when it's behind the main wing it's actually pushing down. Now there are very few canard tractor configurations so we'll only consider the canard pusher configuration. Another possibility and a number of ultralights use this configuration is the flying wing. Now there are a number of airplanes, ultralights mainly, but some uh, light aircraft that don't even have a cockpit. They're, the chair is just out in the open breeze. All that's holding it up is a few tubes connecting it to the rest of the airplane. Now that gives you the ultimate view. But we had a goal of an enclosed cockpit, so we're not going to consider those configurations. Now let's talk about the configuration that's most commonly used in light aircraft, and that's the conventional tractor configuration. Now in this case I'm showing the high wing. Uh, this is a generally good view. Not the best, but not bad. The main problem with this one for our recreational flying view is that the nose blocks a lot of the forward and down view. One consideration for this configuration is that since it's a tractor configuration, you've got prop wash flowing over the fuselage of the airplane. That's air that's going faster than the free stream air. And the free stream air is the other air around the airplane. Because that higher speed air, the tractor configuration has a little bit more drag than a pusher configuration. And since we're interested in reducing drag as much as practical with this ultralight, since we're gonna be using battery power, we wanna have as little drag as we can get that's practical. We we'll probably won't go with this configuration. Another drawback to this configuration, since the engine is in front and the air is coming back towards the cockpit, this is generally going to be a little bit louder than the pusher configuration, although that varies from plane to plane also. 
So as you can see on this slide, I have kind of mocked up a little bit of a, what a view looks like looking over the nose of this conventional tractor configuration. Now this has a high wing. Now the only way you can tell is there's a couple posts here are just barely visible on the right and left side that connect the leading edge of the wing down to the engine mounts and the firewall. Now, as you can see with this view, you've got a little bit of a grayed out area because of the disc of the prop. Generally, props on the back side facing the pilot are painted black, and it helps that helps with the view a little bit looking through the prop. Now, as you can see, you can't see down very well and forward because the nose is blocking the view, and the console, the panel, instrument panel, is blocking the view. Now this is generally good enough when you're coming into land because as you start to get close to the airport, you start nosing over down to descend and that makes the view a little bit easier as you're descending. As you're flying in cruise, you can't see very well down in front of the airplane. And as you can see in uh, this slide, I've mocked up a little view looking out the right hand window of the airplane. We're looking at a high wing with a couple of struts to help transfer some of the wing load down to the fuselage. So you got a great view looking down except for the slight obstruction of the struts. You don't have a view looking up. The wing is blocking a lot of the upward view. But in our case, with the recreational view that we want, that's not a consideration. And as just an aside, there are some airplanes that are cantilever, which means they don't have the struts all the load is carried through the wing to the fuselage. And as a variation on the conventional tractor, this is the low wing conventional tractor. It still has all the same nose view issues that the high wing conventional tractor did. But in this case, with the wing being low, the view looking down is not so great. Now on this slide, I've also mocked up a little bit of a views over the nose. It's pretty much identical to the high wing tractor. All I've changed here is there's a little bit of a bow to attach the windscreen to, and the canopy over the pilot can look at that also. And something I should mention, in many of these low wings, there's a bubble canopy, which you can look straight up through. In some high wings, especially the older Pipers, you don't have that view straight up. Now you can see what I was talking about on this slide about how the low wing obstructs the view looking out to the right through the window and trying to look down. It obstructs a significant amount of that downward view, which we do not want for our recreational view. Now we switch over to the configuration that's frequently used by ultralights, and that's a conventional pusher configuration. Now in general, on these configurations, the pilot's gonna be moved a little bit farther forward than in the tractor configuration. Now the reason for that is the weight of the engine is back at the trailing edge of the wing. To counter that, the pilot has to be moved forward to add some more weight close to the leading edge of the wing. And just to, as a quick aside, if you remember on the tractor configuration, that motor out front is pretty heavy, but it's placed so that it reasonably well counters the weight of the tail. The pilot is placed very close to the center of gravity of the wing. So that's one of the advantages of the conventional high wing and low wing in the tractor configuration. The pilot being close to the center of gravity can change weight a great deal. You can have two people, one person, a large person, a small person. It's not significant. It doesn't move the center of gravity of the airplane. On these conventional pushers though, where the engine weight is back behind and you have to counter that weight by moving the pilot forward, now the pilot weight makes a difference. Now some of these airplanes will have a calculation, a table that you look up the pilot weight. That table will tell you what weight to add or remove from the nose of the airplane so that you have the correct center of gravity. In a future video, we'll get more into the uh, how important having the center of gravity in the right place on the airplane is. So now we have the forward view looking out of a pusher configuration. And you can see now you have a much better view over the nose. Now I drew it so that it's quite a bit more, but you can get more on some airplanes where there's a very stubby nose very far down and you have an excellent view over the nose. I added a couple of posts slash braces to this view 
mainly because I intend to add those to the design for the UWS-1. Some of these ultralights don't have that. It's just plexiglass or Lexan curved around in front of the pilot. We're going to add that to our ultralight to help protect the pilot in case we have to land in trees. It will make it a little bit harder for a limb to come through and injure the pilot. So now you can see a little bit what I was talking about on the side view on these pusher configurations. The pilot is now forward more than in the tractor configuration. So the view blocked by the wing is farther back behind the pilot. You have a better view looking up and forward. Another thing to note is that some of the ultralights will have struts, which I had shown in the tractor high wing configuration. I just omitted them here. Another configuration you'll see on some older lights that I'm, I'll talk about here a little bit is the tractor configuration where the engine is mounted to the wing. Now this will give you a better view over the nose. You also get the advantage of the pilot's weight not being issued. The pilot will be close to the CG. So you can have one pilot, two pilots, a light pilot and a heavy pilot. So it's really an interesting compromise of the low nose that you get from the pusher configuration, but the very forgiving pilot CG issue of the tractor configuration. All right, another configuration that's not frequently used on ultralights, but is very interesting, which is the canard configuration. In this case, you have your horizontal control surface in front of the main wing instead of behind the main wing. So this is a, not quite as good for the view as with the pusher configuration. So because you'll have that horizontal surface slightly blocking your view. Now I did not make a mock-up of what this view would look like, but uh, it's just, it's not bad, but we probably won't use it for our airplane. I did think of another design we might use in the future for a new ultralight airplane design. Now you'll notice in this configuration, I have the canard attached to the nose. So it's down on the nose and blocking some of the view. What if you raise that canard up higher to the height of the wing and used a couple booms to hold it? Booms that attach to the tips of the canard and go back to the main wing. Then you'd still have a great recreational view forward and down, just like you would on the pusher configuration. It might be interesting to play with. Another configuration you don't see too much of, but there is some is the flying wing configuration and there have been a, a few designs doing that. It has a great view looking down and around like the pusher configuration. One of the drawbacks of the flying wing is it has a very small center of gravity range which you have to be careful about. There are some other advantages and disadvantages of the flying wing design that we may get to in a future video. So this is the current configuration I'm thinking of for the UWS-1 design. The layout is going to be similar to the pusher configuration that we talked about before, mainly because of the better view that you get. We had goals of having two motors on the airplane, so I put those on here. Uh, redundant control surfaces, so there are two rudders on here. And of course the tricycle gear landing configuration. I quickly drew up a mock-up of this airplane in a program called OpenVSP. Now this isn't what it'll look like eventually. I'm considering a number of variations on this basic layout, but we'll get to that more in some future videos. Coming up on future videos, we'll have another unboxing video. I've got some more carbon fiber that has shown up. I'm in hankering to get my hands dirty, so we'll do a wet layup of some carbon fiber that we'll compare to some aluminum. We'll talk about some of the reference books I'm using to help design the airplane. I'll put some links down in the description for this video in case you're interested in visiting the website that I've created for the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. Also, I've created a Facebook page for the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. There's a link down for that. If you'd like to become a patron of the channel and help support some of the videos for destroying some carbon fiber composites in testing that we'll be doing, that'd be great. There's a link down in the description for that. And of course, we'll get into the nitty gritty details of the design. See you later.